if you watch Drew Brees later in the 2018 season, he really, really steadily declined downfield. His arm strength, his deep passes, they began to flutter. They began to drift and float downfield. And um, I feel I feel for Drew Brees because his entire career, he's been able to make certain throws. And, and now at 40 years old, the throws he's always been able to make, he can't do anymore. It, it's no longer feasible. He'll go to wind up to make a throw he could make easily when he was 25. And now the ball doesn't get there on time. It flutters. It hangs in the air. His arm strength isn't what it used to be. His arm strength is declining. And uh, the Saints were pretty resourceful. They found a way to combat this and a way to make up for Drew Brees' lack of arm strength. The Saints put in Taysom Hill. He's their backup quarterback. He played quarterback at BYU. And uh, they use him sort of as a wildcat type quarterback. They run the ball a lot with Taysom Hill. Every once in a while, they have him throw a deep ball. Um, but to make up for Drew Brees' limitations throwing the ball, they use Taysom Hill as kind of a gadget player. They put him at wide receiver and use him at kick returns, and sometimes he plays quarterback. And a lot of the times you'll see, like, even on third down, Drew Brees isn't the quarterback in the backfield. They have Drew Brees split out wide, and Taysom Hill is under center or in the shotgun playing quarterback. And as Drew Brees gets older, in the next year or two years, his flaws are going to become even more significant. Those problems Drew Brees is having throwing the ball downfield, they're going to get worse and worse and worse, and they're just going to magnify. And so as much as I love Drew Brees, my favorite quarterback, him and Tom Brady were my two favorite quarterbacks growing up. My whole life loved him. I made a video called Five Inspiring Quarterbacks. I talked about why Drew Brees and Tom Brady are my favorites. Um, however, sadly, um, the end is near for Drew Brees. His career is coming to an end. You can feel it. You watch him play football. You go, yeah, he really doesn't uh, have the same arm strength he used to have. Some of that, I, and my theory is he's on his tiptoes a lot. You watch him throw his deep balls. He kind of gets really high. Doesn't use his legs a lot downfield. Um, now, my fear is that the Saints just lost in the NFC Championship game. They kind of got robbed. The Rams were going to the Super Bowl, not the Saints. And uh, my fear is that that was Drew Brees' last chance to make it to a Super Bowl. I don't know that he's going to get this opportunity again. Um, not that the Saints are bad, but if you watch you know, guys like Phillip Rivers, Ben Roethlisberger, Drew Brees, they're all declining. Their arm strength is declining with their old age. Weirdly enough, if you watch Tom Brady, he's the only quarterback, the only old quarterback who still throws the ball maybe even better than he when he was young. Tom Brady. I'm not sure if it's Tom Brady's lifestyle. If it's genetics, it's probably a mixture of both. Tom Brady's got a couple years left. A couple good years. He still throws the ball just like he did two years, two, three, five years ago. Um, however, the Saints and the Chargers, they got to find replacements for their quarterbacks, Phillip Rivers and Drew Brees. The Saints got to find something. Got to find a successor. And at first glance, many people that are fans of the Saints especially would say, the Saints are fine. Their, success, their succession plan at quarterback is to have Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill, the backup quarterback for the Saints. Uh, again, at a glance, it makes sense. Taysom Hill played a lot this season. He makes a lot of throws. Um, he's a great runner, but the truth is that's really what he does best is Taysom Hill is a running quarterback. It's kind of gimmicky. They run a lot of weird play action and fly sweeps and zone reads, and they don't run a traditional offense with Taysom Hill. I do not believe that Taysom Hill is the long-term answer at quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. It's just kind of a, he's a wildcat quarterback. He's like Tim Tebow. He's more Tim Tebow than Drew Brees. There's one other option to consider for the New Orleans Saints. Um, it's an unpopular one right now, I would imagine, in New Orleans, but it is Teddy Bridgewater. In 2018, Teddy Bridgewater signed, he, well, he, he got traded to the Saints. The Saints traded for Teddy Bridgewater. And he had a one-year deal. He had a one-year contract with the Saints, which means that in March 2019, a month from now, Teddy Bridgewater will become a free agent. So he could stay with the Saints. They have a chance to re-sign him. And if they don't, he's an un unrestricted free agent. He can go wherever he wants, wherever the best deal is. And uh, I believe, I firmly believe the Saints should re-sign Teddy Bridgewater. Here's why. It's interesting. I, and this is why it's an unpopular belief. Teddy Bridgewater started one game for the Saints last year. 
Week 17 against the Carolina Panthers, Teddy Bridgewater was 14 for 22 passing with one touchdown, one interception, and only 118 yards. He struggled. Wasn't great. And I actually believe part of him struggling is why it's good for the— that's a really good thing for the Saints. The fact that Teddy Bridgewater didn't go out and kill it Week 17 is a blessing in disguise for the New Orleans Saints. It means that demand for Teddy Bridgewater is really low. No one really believes in the guy. And uh, there, he's a pretty low price on the free agent market. If you want to re-sign Teddy Bridgewater, it's it's well more than likely. If he goes out and kills it week 17, Jaguars would snag him up instantly. Because he kind of struggled in week 17, it means the Saints could get him at a bargain price. That's good. And, and I really believe after watching Teddy Bridgewater in week 17 against the Panthers, uh, I don't think... He's hopeless. I don't think he's a lost cause. I would imagine Teddy Bridgewater watched that game and learned a ton. I'm sure he watched it and went, oof, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. I got to learn from that. I got to do better on this play. But that's life. That kind of happens sometimes. I don't know. You got to remember that Ted, Teddy Bridgewater's first, last start before week 17, 2018 was January 2016. So he played the 2015 season all through, got to the first round of the playoffs. Teddy Bridgewater got hurt uh, in, in the offseason. So Teddy Bridgewater didn't play at all in 2016. He played two sna- He had two pass attempts in 2017. Teddy Bridgewater hadn't played a game in two years. But he's a talented player. Remember, Teddy Bridgewater is a first-round pick. And not just a first-round pick. I mean, I know that a lot of players have been first-round picks. He was the franchise quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings until he got hurt. It was devastating for the Vikings. So uh, you watch week 17. Here's what happened with Teddy Bridgewater. He just struggled with pressure. There were guys open underneath. A linebacker would blitz. And when a linebacker blitzes as a quarterback, you got to get really excited because that means somewhere on the field, especially short in the middle, space has opened up. The middle linebacker blitz. If you run right at me, the middle linebacker blitzes right at me. There's a vacancy right where you were standing. People blitzing, getting pressure in your face isn't necessarily bad. And Teddy Bridgewater didn't handle it well. He didn't recognize blitzes very well. He didn't check down underneath. Lots of guys were open underneath. Short to intermediate passes right in front of Teddy Bridgewater were there. And he either took sacks, ran around, or tried to throw the ball deep downfield. Especially on the goal line. There was a really, really egregious play where... The, the backers came, they, the, the Panthers ran an all-out blitz. I believe it was Michael Thomas was wide open at running a slant right in front of him, and he tried to throw a corner ball into double coverage behind him instead of just throwing underneath, replacing the linebackers, and scoring a touchdown. And so, um, that's, I mean, that's the Saints offense. If you can't understand how to dink and dunk underneath, you're not going to work in the Saints offense. That's why Drew Brees has been successful for so many years. But I really think this is a case of Teddy Bridgewater just needing reps. I, sometimes you got to just see it once before you can do it again. First time playing in two years. You think he wasn't a little bit nervous? Think he wasn't a little bit? I know you don't want to hear that. You want to hear quarterback had veins of steel. Uh, but this guy had his knee blown up, like destroyed. And he's never played, didn't play a lot in this offense. I'm sure he didn't get a bunch of reps all week in practice. Sometimes you just got to do things first before they click. And I really would be curious. The Saints got to work with Teddy Bridgewater for an entire season. They know who Teddy Bridgewater is. And I'm certain they probably know whether or not they want to keep him. But if the Saints did decide to keep him, I, despite his struggles, I wouldn't be concerned. I still have hope for Teddy Bridgewater. Man, truly, Drew Brees, his ability to throw the ball downfield is steadily declining. Drew Brees' days are numbered. You got to figure out something. Got to figure out somebody when Drew Brees ultimately retires and walks away. You need some kind of backup plan. Week 17, Teddy Bridgewater made a lot of solid throws. He wasn't terrible. He missed some reads, didn't didn't recognize Blitz very well. He's got a good arm. I think he just needs more reps and he needs coaching. I really believe you watch Teddy Bridgewater week 17 against the Panthers. There's something there. I think he needs to watch film and go, That's I got to make that throw, got to make that throw, got to make that throw. But he's not a lost cause. And if it's not Teddy Bridgewater, I don't think it's Taysom Hill. 
If they're not going to commit to either one of those guys, the Saints have to pick somebody in the draft because Drew Brees' days are more numbered than they were last year. He looks worse and worse, not just as the season, not just with every season. Week five, Drew Brees was a better quarterback with a stronger arm than he was in the NFC Championship game than he was in week 12. He steadily declined all season, throwing them all deep downfield. And so uh, the Saints got to find some kind of succession plan after Drew Brees. Oh, I, I hate doing this. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I really don't like self-promotion. It makes me feel like a used car salesman, but I got to do it. So if you don't know, this is my podcast, Strong Opinion Sports. It's my favorite thing in the world. And you can subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud. You can find it on YouTube. You can find the full entire hour-long podcast on YouTube. You can also find shorter breakout clips like the one you just watched. Please do me a favor. If you like anything I had to say, maybe you hate me and you're mad about something. Share this podcast with your friends. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you want to do. Help me grow by telling your friends about this show.